don't pick that life, that life picks you. Welcome to Sit Down News, and before I begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Ratchet is a clothing company from the UK, started by a young man with a vision, a dream, and determination. They have various prints and styles for men, women, and children. I'll include a link to their website down below in the description for this video. By now, many of you heard me speak about Ernie Grillo. Presently, Ernie has a captain's position with the Gambino family. For those of you who may not know, Ernie at one time was the son-in-law of Anello Della Croce, former Gambino on the boss. For those of you who may know Ernie or had the chance to be in his company, you will agree with me that he's a quirky guy in the street, but he was even more so in prison. Ernie and I were away together at Fishkill Correction Facility. When Ernie was first transferred to Fishkill, the prison was overcrowded to the point of them putting beds and lockers in the hallway. I was able to get him pulled to our unit, but unfortunately he had to sleep on one of those beds. I had a one-man room with a door myself, but the hallway beds were evenly spaced out and only on one side of the hall. Ernie's neighbor in the hallway was a Spanish guy who played the trumpet, except he didn't actually have a trumpet, so he just played with his mouth. Ernie would come to my cell, John, do you hear him? He's doing it again. I would laugh and just tell him to put his headphones on. At this time, I had outside clearance and spent most of my day cutting grass with a John Deere tractor. One afternoon, I got back to the unit and noticed that the bed of the Spanish guy that lived next to Ernie was pushed all the way away from his area. When Ernie got back from the yard, I questioned him about it. He smiled. You like that? I gave myself some more real estate. I said, Ernie, I'm telling you, it's going to cause a problem. But he didn't listen to me and he kept it like that. And it stayed that way for about one whole day. The next day when I got back on a unit, I noticed it right away. The bed was back in its original place. I went to look for Ernie and found him washing his hands in the sink at the community bathroom. I asked him how he was doing. He said good, but it was written all over his face. He was pissed. Then I looked down and noticed that he had his boxing shoes on. I said, Ernie, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to beat his fucking head in for touching my property. Naturally, the guy had to move Ernie's locker to put his own stuff back. I had to talk sense into him. I said, Ernie, didn't you touch his property when you gave yourself more real estate? He looked at me and he laughed. But that didn't stop him from warning the Spanish trumpet play and never to touch his property ever again. Since I was outside most of the day, I told Ernie to use myself for privacy. I figured it would make life a little more tolerable for him. At this time, Ernie was into city yoga. He would listen to tapes of Swami Muktananda and this woman named Gura Mari. So one day I came back to the unit and my door was closed. I knocked. He didn't answer, but I figured he was using my bathroom. The cells had their own bathrooms in it. I went over and sat on his bed to wait for him to come out. He eventually did, holding a rug under his arm. I said, Ernie, what took you so long? He says, oh, I was meditating. And from that day forward, I started calling him Swami. The next day, it was the same thing. But by the third day, I had enough. I said through my closed door, Listen, Swami, I gotta go to the bathroom, so get on your magical carpet and fly the fuck out of my cell. He came out hysterical laughing. Aside from yoga and Buddhism, Ernie became a vegetarian. He refused to eat meat. In prison, everyone's usually hungry. The crazy thing was, we were allowed a 35-pound package from home every month, so we ate better than most guys. Ernie had a guy he knew from Chicago send in hermetically sealed sausage and meatballs. We would make a big pot of sauce and feed all our friends in the yard. While we were out there, I'd grab a handful of grass and tease Ernie that I got him dinner. However, he just ate his trail mix while we all feasted on this good food. Ernie didn't last long on our unit. I remember warning him about a woman guard who enjoyed locking guys up. Ernie was on the phone and it was almost count time. I told him, Ernie, don't be on the phone when that woman calls the count. Sure enough, she calls the count, and I look over, and I see Ernie still on the phone. Ernie was locked up and went to the box that day for interfering with the count. The best part of the story is when we were both out and having dinner one night at Nucci's in Staten Island. I wasn't paying much attention to what he ordered, but at some point I looked over and seen he had a steak. I thought about all the times he drove me crazy with his vegetarian bullshit in prison. I said, you're eating a steak, you son of a bitch? He just looked at me, smiled, and continued to enjoy his steak. 
You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description for this video.